I'm here at Teach Beach, our outdoor classroom. What I want to talk about here is XV. There's two axes in the extendiverse. We label them reality, which is the universe made of atoms. We label that alpha. The word atom is a Greek word, and the first letter of that word is alpha. So we label the reality axis alpha, the axis going from left to right. And the axis going from bottom to top is the bits axis, the virtuality axis. Virtual world is made of bits, so we use the Greek letter beta, the second letter of the Greek alphabet, to represent the bits. So the axes are alpha and beta, the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. Here we have a useful taxonomy because it, it sort of divides the plane up into quadrants. In the lower left quadrant we have diminished reality and diminished virtuality and here we have a float tank, a sensory isolation tank. In a float tank we have zero input from the real world and zero input from the virtual world. And then the real world we've got physical reality. This is the real physical world, the real universe in which we live. A good example of a fully immersive physical reality experience is cold water swimming where you just jump into the lake which we'll be doing shortly. And in cold water swimming you swim in the lake and you're connected to reality. You're fully immersed in the natural world. You know, the natural world of pebbles and, and water. And we have, this is the liminal space where the three states of matter all come together. You know, you've, you've got the earth, water, and air. And then on this axis, we're in the float tank with a VR headset. And so this is a VR float tank, and the whole idea of being in a sensory deprivation tank with virtual reality puts you up on this axis, on the bits axis. Uh, no input from the real world, and strictly virtual. Interestingly, we have augmented reality, which is where you have a mixture of atoms and bits, say, some alpha and some beta. And up here, in, in, in this position, we've got the ice water swimming, but with a headset, with a overlay, with a augmented reality overlay. This, for example, is the Vuzik Smart Swim, and this is a augmented reality overlay headset that shows you compass, GPS, heading. We program in where the rocks are, other rock hazards and things like that. Like if there's rocks here, we've got uh, various signals can be displayed on here that give you a heightened sense of awareness of what you're of the actual world that you're in. Now, if we look at the XV continuum, here we've got physical reality, PR, augmented reality, AR, virtual reality, VR, and diminished reality, DR. PR, AR, VR, and DR are these sort of four quadrants, although it's a continuous space, really. But what we really want is XR, which is this overarching theme, which kind of encompasses all of those, and then some. XR allows us to go beyond the 100% point. That's at least its goal. So, whereas, here we have reality, physical reality on the alpha axis and virtual reality on the beta axis, 100% alpha, 100% beta. And if we put on a VR headset, you know, you could argue that maybe it's 70.7% of each, you know, like kind of an equal length vector, square root of two. But what we really try are trying to do is to reach further out to come way out on this axis. So we've got actually more than what the real world will give you because we've got this heightened sense of awareness of the real world. When you're swimming with this thing, you're aware of all these ice fragments and, and you're aware of your own body. You know, you get your heart rate down to 30 beats per minute, perhaps. You know, you get your heart rate down really low through biofeedback and, and, and so on. So it really amplifies your sense of awareness of both the real and the virtual. And in this sense, extended reality, XR, takes you, tries to bring you out from the origin, and it can also bring you in because you can also use it to attenuate. So XR is this bigger space that encompasses these four and then much more. For example, with this awareness, we might, if you want to, XR could can give you a point that's 150% of reality, say, and maybe 50% of virtuality. Maybe you only want a little bit of virtual input, but you want to heighten your sense of awareness of the real world with safety information, overlays, GPS map, compass, heart, and so on. So you come from the origin way out past uh, what the four realities would normally give you. And that's kind of the goal of XR, or one of the goals of XR is to be able to navigate these other spaces. So XR is any combination of a virtual environment with reality where the virtual environment is responsive to a real or complex valued output from reality by way of real-time computation. Uh, XV definition. XV 
is a single, unbounded, universal, persistent, immersive, shared XR universe. So in some sense, the extendiverse is extended reality combined with extended intelligence, XI, you know, the CXI, the Council for Extended Intelligence. I'm one of the founding members of it. And so a goal that we're trying to achieve with XI and with XR is this XV. Now, within this taxonomy, let's introduce a third axis, the social axis. Whereas when we're near the origins, we have atoms, bits. Here we have genes, maybe the smallest unit of humanness. Genes is a Greek word also that starts with the third letter of the Greek alphabet, gamma. So let's label these axes alpha, beta, and gamma, uh, atoms, bits, and genes sort of near the origin, but of course they extend out to, to reality, virtuality, and sociality. Now we just take our space here and we come out of the page. Imagine we come out of the page. So uh, we can have a communal immersive reality experience, like a communal experience in nature. Uh, we have ice water swimming together as a group. Uh, that's a communal reality experience, an immersive physical reality experience. We can have uh, augmented reality ice water swimming together as a group. So that's a shared augmented reality experience. And of course, we can have a completely virtual experience, like shared sensory deprivation float tanks, where we get together and we experience the float tanks together as a group, or any other kind of shared reality. So that gives us the third axis.